Alright guys, welcome back to Second and Island where I'm stuck with you and we are always smiling. Yes, I have to shout because I'm working with the most dangerous and the loudest and the most disrespectful cooking apparatus that any Jamaican knows. If you know what it is, drop it in the comments. And the reason why I say it is so freaking disrespectful, it's making a bunch of noise and I keep telling you to shut the hell up. It keeps telling me, you are the one that's talking too loud. <sighs> Sorry. But anyway, on a nicer note. If you guys want to know what's in the pressure cooker, right now I'm pressuring some gungu peas to make some gungu and rice. Today's dish, I'm actually doing an oxtail dish. Couple twists to it that is my version of it, you know, tailor all of the Jamaican way. But for some reason, I just find that oxtail goes really well with rice and gungu for me personally. If it goes better with rice for you, drop it in the comments. But if it's your second time coming back here to watch a video or you just watch all my videos, Drop a like on the video. I'll definitely appreciate that and it's gonna help the channel to grow a lot. I appreciate it. Now a lot of persons want to know what is oxtail? Is it coming from a cow? Is it coming from a pig? Is it coming from an ox? If you know, drop it in the comments. Let everybody know what it is. If you know, drop it in the comments. Now to make a really good oxtail, it's important that you marinate overnight. You're gonna get even better flavors that way. So I'll show you a quick clip of me marinating the oxtail. Oh my gosh, one of the things of just filming, like I was filming, put it on all the seasoning and then the camera just tripped out and I, I can't re-season it, can I? <laughs> so I'm just going to tell you exactly what I put on it. I put about five cloves on it, about five pimento seeds. What else did I put? Um, half of a minced onion, two pegs of garlic. Um, you guys just see the Goya seasoning go on. They put a little bit of this in there. This is garlic salt. What else? One of the secret ingredients for me, which really makes it good, I know some Jamaicans are going to be like, what now? I'm doing it my way. I find that when you do dishes your way and people eat it, they go like, wow, this is different. I use two small packets of this, of coffee. The reason for this is, yo, let me tell you, coffee is a meat tenderizer if you do not know. And also, people normally put browning into their oxtail to give it that darkness. I'm using coffee to give me that darkness, and whenever I'm gonna braise it, it's gonna give it that nice caramelized type of flavor to it. It is gonna caramelize, trust me. And um, what else did I use? Am I missing anything? Mmm, pepper. Yes, I did use some scotch bonnet pepper. I did use uh, half a small scotch bonnet pepper and two stalks of escalion. And that was basically it. I'll give you a tip. The more herbs you use in your dishes, guys, is the less salt you need. There's something about herbs that add this flavor. Remember, back in the day, people did not have salt like that. Salt wasn't like the main thing. So herbs was a great way of seasoning up their food. So the more herbs you have, is the less salt you have, especially if you're one of those persons who you might be diabetic or you can't just have a, a high salt intake. It's a great tip. Gradually, you get off of it. All right. I thought being in the fridge would kind of chill me out a little bit better and maybe lessen the sound from the freaking pressure cooker. But yeah, that's basically how you marinate the oxtail. Now what we're gonna do right now is to braise the oxtail. And brace for the excessive noises that you might hear as I do this. But don't worry about it. The pressure cooker will be off in a couple minutes. So here's a little trick that I do. If I overcook so much peas or gungu or sometimes I, sometimes I do it you know sometimes I do it purposefully I can always stir it with the water over it down and I can just stir it in my freezer so chances are if I'm busy from work or whatever and I see for some gungu peas and rice I don't have to worry about pressuring everything it might not taste as great as it was just done but it saves some time all right so what we're gonna do is kind of braise it or saute whatever you want to call it um, so we're going to add a little bit of oil there, more that's coconut oil. Um, for those who want to know, because I realize people always want to know what I use, this is Grace, but just make sure it's virgin. So if you're in the US, you know virgins are, it's really good. So make sure, <laughs> could you just say that on camera? Anyway, but you get the idea. Virgin in oil or anything is generally, you know, usually better. And of course, um, we're going to add some butter. For me personally, I just like having oil and butter. They're two different things, trust me. 
Well, anyway, um, the oil is not hot enough, but let's wait till I heat up. I would have noticed cooking with electric stoves is a lot different than an open flame or even a wooden flame. I mean, a wood fire. So it does take some practice and getting used to. So let's see. That's perfect. So what I'm gonna do is just give it a quick little thing to allow the coffee to caramelize and to actually lock in the flavors, especially for a tougher meat like an oxtail or cow or beef, whatever you wanna call it. It's good to do something like this. So we're not trying to cook it out, we're just trying to give it some color. The stove top heat right now is just a bit about medium. Wow. You can smell the light notes of coffee. It's, ooh, it's not too much and it's not too little, it's just there. And that's what you always want to do in your cooking. Whatever the, the main flavor is, everything else that you add to it is only for complementing the dish, yeah? Makes sense, makes sense. All right, so just to give you a look at what we want on the side, I want it to look something like this. So you can see there's a caramelization happening there. See that? That's what I want. So I'm not trying to cook it all the way through just to get those little nice colors on it and to seal in the flavor. That's what all we're doing right now. Oh, look at this one. Perfect. Perfect. Be done, so all I'm gonna do is just to take them out because again, we're not trying to cook them all the way through, just to seal in the flavor. All right, so we're at the part now where we need to pressure the oxtail, even though pressure cooker make a whole heap nice, we're not to pressure it. <laughs> Corny that joke. So, anyway, what I'm doing right now is to so all the marinade that I had before. I just threw that oat into it so we're not wasting any of the seasonings. And just wash out the pan with some water, which I'm going to throw into this. What I'm basically going to do is just to have enough water in here so it can pressure adequately. So I did also mention I was making gungu peas, so I'm going to throw some of that gungu water into there. I have a little bit too much. Reason why I'm doing that, this is gonna add starch, it's gonna add nutrition, it's gonna also add flavor into it. So anything that you can use that has flavor, just toss it back into your pot. No big deal, man. The same goes for that coconut oil that you had used. We all know how expensive coconut oil is, and that oil actually has all the nice fats and the flavor from what the oxtail as well. Now I have about this much of ginger that I kind of pressed a little bit, so I'm gonna drop that into that. And the last thing I'm going to do is to add about this much of salt into the pot and a sprig of fresh thyme. I know persons always ask me for recipes or whatever, but to be honest, when I'm cooking, I just cook out of my head. I have a basic concept of what I want already. I know the ingredients that I want, but we just put things together. So just watch the video and you get an idea of how I do it. Just like this, even here, finally, I'm going to add a little bit of coconut oil. That I would not have on a recipe, but it's just about how you feel, ain't it? <sighs> and yes, I am sweating. I need to get an air conditioner for this part of the unit. Yeah, it's a part of YouTube. I'm doing these videos for you guys. Yo, if you appreciate these things, drop a like on the video. Um, but in today's video, I'm gonna actually be having um, Davin, who's gonna be taste testing this dish. I know a lot of you will watch the videos and people say, Oh my God, too much seasoning. Uh... Or whatever that people is that they say because they can't quite taste the dish right but it's good to have persons who can try the dish you guys saw the reaction from the last dish yesterday so that means we'll be tasting this one and we'll see how good this one turns out oh, now that i'm not feeling the talking parts where the wind will be affecting me i can open the window fresh air i almost killed my baby i'm sorry all right so the oxtail is almost done i'll give you a quick trick about the the pressure cooker that it has you know you make mistakes and you find stuff out 
One of the mistakes I find with a pressure cooker is that you can't quite see what's inside of it, so you don't know the water level. One tip trick that I do is, for one, you can always move the pressure cooker. You can feel how heavy it is. So if there's a little bit of water, it's definitely going to be lighter, of course. The next thing is, once it goes really low, the water pressure goes, the water level goes really low, then it's less steam coming out of it. You know, your water level is definitely too low. Here I caught it a little bit perfect, so I'm going to add in the ingredients. So first of all, you guys know this one here butter bean in jamaica we call it broad beans i'm gonna add that in and i'm tossing that in with the water carefully mix that in because i don't want to break it up the butter beans are already cooked so you're not really worrying about that too much let me turn back my stove on onto a low or a bit above low and here's one strange ingredient which i think is really really good the baked beans most Jamaicans or none that I know uses it, but I remember my aunt using it. And let me tell you, it's really good. It adds a nice sweetness to it and it adds more beans, so more protein. Stretch your pot a little bit more because we know oxtail really expensive. Now, if you want to do it exactly like I did, this is the brown sugar and bacon one. So it's going to give you a really nice flavor. Toss all that in. And depending on the salt content of your sauce, then you can just add some water. But I have to test that on mine first, in mine first. Mm. It's pretty good, but I'm going to add some water to that. You guys know in Jamaica, definitely wash up the tin. I went on with something. Put that in. I'll allow it to simmer down in that. Not tasting any pepper in it, so I'm gonna throw a little bit of that in there and I'll allow it to simmer down. Alright, so it's now dinner time. I've been waiting for Davine, but she had a little thing, so she'll get here a little bit later. But anyhow, uh, I'm gonna start off with the rice and gungo. Yep, I love shelly rice, if you guys don't notice. If you like shelly rice, just drop it in the comments and let me know what you prefer. Last time I forgot my plantain, I won't do that this time. No way. Who's it? That's the plantain. Some coleslaw. Just purple cabbage only. I call this my little spicy coleslaw. And now for the meat that everybody's been waiting for. The oxtail. Now remember guys, drop it in the comments, let us know what the oxtail is. Is it from an ox? Is it from a cow? Drop it in the comments just to let us know. Now we're going to add our gravy on top. Tell me where you guys like to throw your gravy. Is it on the rice? Is it just on the meat? Me, generally I like my gravy on the meat only. Yeah, I can mix it up if I want to after. Wow. Just look at that. Look how beautiful this oxtail is, yo. Oh my gosh, wow. All right, so let's get right into it. Look at that one, it's nice and soft. Um, how long was I cooking the oxtail for? Mm, about an hour 45, about two hours. You wanna cook the oxtail until it's soft enough. Mm -mm -mm. Oh yeah, not too soft, not too firm. Mm. If you ask me, I definitely would love when my oxtail the bone is pretty soft so I can chew it, but either other way, you can suck on the bone. But if you want it at that texture, just pressure it longer. Just gungo please. Alright, it's so good. Mm. Mm -mm. 
Kind of not close, though, would it? I like getting everything in one mouthful. The oxtail, the gungo rice, plantain, salsa. Mm. I'm just getting all that flavor in one. Yes, love. Mm. This is what I hate. When people serve me with the ginger, like this big old ginger in there, I'm so happy I didn't give it to Davin. Hate seeing that. Think it's meat, then you bite it. Right, that ginger. Mm -mm. All right, for me, this dish is a win. But I'm gonna make Davin try it, give you a short review on it, and take it away, Jim. Before you leave, you have a twerk on the road. You got a <laughs> Bro, twerk. You, you, you know. Bro. Yo, this shit is really nice. I'm gonna even eat it. Yeah, but those taste of gravy. <laughs> Jesus, please. Mm. Mm -mm. Steven. <laughs> no. Mm -mm. Well, look at spinners there. Look at dumpling in there. I think, yeah, there's one there. But that's from yesterday, so. Two peach from yesterday, Oxy from today. <laughs> uh uh. I'm just actually. Uh uh. uh. <laughs> oh! Papa Jesus, it's a sitting at his real. Hmm. Oh wow. Hold on. Where? Uh uh. Mm -mm. This I touch my heart, but not like seriously. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you appreciate it. <laughs> Listen, my can't have a talk to all the food tastes nice. No, oh, 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 that's really good.